look how beautiful y'all are. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than a whitetail fawn. Hey everybody, welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories and to Tejada Whitetails, where right now it's breakfast time. They're feeding the babies. But Tejada Whitetails is located just outside of Houston, Texas, and it's home to one of my favorite bucks of all time, Gunslinger. And on today's show, you're gonna see that Gunslinger is not only giant, but he's getting the job done too with production. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. My name is George Tunaw and I own Tejada Whitetails. This is the third time that we've had Keith back here. We're excited to have him here and no doubt we know that he's excited to see Gunslinger. So this is our third year having Keith out here recording a show with us and it's just fun to see him drive through the pins because it doesn't matter where he's at, he's got his binos up and he's looking for Gunslinger. All right, so we're gonna show you Gunslinger. We're gonna show you a lot of Gunslinger on today's show, but uh, we're gonna start out in the certified pins. And George, if you would tell everybody what the certified pins are for. Certified pins, have to be monitored six years, animal health. Any state that is allowed to take deer, we can ship them deer if their borders are open. Okay, so I want to point something out that, uh, you know, I've been traveling all over the north filming deer farms and everybody's talking about gunslinger. I mean, how do they get gunslinger genetics up there? They really want the, from the doe side. Okay, it's really easy to get it from the top side because you can call George and get some semen, but the way that they can get it from on the bottom side is by dealing with somebody like George Tunall and getting him out of a certified pen. So you do sell deer to people up north? Yes, if any state that is allowed to take them, we can sell them to out of these particular pens. Okay, so that, that's what's so cool about this is that if you want to get started right, I mean, we always tell people start with uh, the best quality of deer that you can buy, not quantity, but quality. And as far as quality goes, I mean, everybody, you'd have to be living underneath a rock to not have heard about Gunslinger, especially if you watch our show. Because every all the, everybody thinks I'm a partner in Gunslinger, but I'm not. I just love the deer. And we're going to show you plenty of Gunslinger, but he is not in the certified herd right here but there's plenty of blood from Gunslinger in this herd, right? Yes, and there'll be a lot more that's coming here. Okay, so if somebody wanted to buy a bread dough out of here, you can do so and yes. deliver it. Yes, as long as their state accepts them, yes, we can. Okay, so give them, a, uh, give them a telephone number so they can get a hold of you if they want to find out more information. And, and folks, you're not gonna be calling somebody and getting, a, getting just an average deer. I want you to know that. You're gonna be calling somebody a certified deer is a very valuable deer and the genetics are as good as you can get. So go ahead and give them a phone number. It's 832-622-2571. Okay, now you got a deer in here. Last year in the certified pen, we saw a great big deer. He was kind of lopsided a little bit. And what did y'all name him now? We named him Texas Jack. Okay, and that's gotta be him right there. Yes, most definitely. Okay, so that's the same buck that we filmed in here last year that had a damage on one side. Yeah, as a yearling, he stuck his head through the fence to eat peanuts. And that doesn't ever work out well when you have antlers on. And so when he pulled them back, he kind of tweaked them. This year, you can see just on his right side alone, looks like a rib cage. Not a question of whether he has 10 or 12 inch tines, it's a question of how many 12 inch tines he has. So there's a whole bunch of them. And you know, he's, uh, one thing that makes that deer really special don't get me wrong, he's a beautiful deer. He's gonna have a lot of antler on his head, but his pedigree, you know how I always preach pedigree, pedigree, pedigree. Yeah, that's George's middle name. <laughs> You've got triple crown over Gunslinger's womb sister. So it's kind of hard to get better than that. You know, Triple Crown, we all know who he is. Gunslinger, hopefully everybody seems to know who he is. Uh, but you've got both of them in one mix. You actually have Triple Crown over top of Gunslinger's womb. So you got a strong buck over powerhouse doe. It's kind of hard to do any better than that. 
I look at him and think, okay, folks, the deer's only two years old. And at one, he was big. Okay, he had a little bit of antler damage, but at two, he's gotten really big. And it's gonna be interesting to see what he does at three. And uh, is he for sale? Oh yeah, anything's for sale, but he's not on sale. I can assure you of that. <laughs> okay, the uh, green tags in here, they gotta be yearlings? Yes, they're all yearlings. Okay, and when you take a look at these yearlings, I mean, just take a look at them, folks. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful. All of them were born here? Yes, all of them born here. Okay, so uh, I want to ask you a question. What is your philosophy on somebody purchasing a yearling, or would you sell a yearling? I mean, you deal with all your stuff is the best genetics you can get. And what do you think? Well, yearlings, you just never know what they're going to do it to. We'll look at a deer here in a moment that last year his antlers would fit in your pocket, literally. This year, he's all over the website, Lone Ranger. He's in excess of 30 inches wide. The big yearlings, yeah, they're gonna be big two-year-olds. Well, are they gonna be my biggest two-year-old? Usually not. Usually there's somebody that you didn't even look at in the pen as a yearling that is your next superstar. Okay, so uh, we will actually show you Lone Ranger here in just a second, but uh, that's a good piece of advice. When you're dealing with somebody that's got great pedigrees, and like I said, that's George's middle name, Okay, great pedigrees. What happens is that as a yearling, they may not be very good, but as a two-year-old, they could blow up to be the biggest deer you got. So let's go take a look at Lone Ranger, what do you say? That's, that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Advanced Deer Genetics, New Dart, Divine Genetics, the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetail's Big Buck Draft and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this is off our website. It says, thanks for putting this show out there, Keith Warren. It's about time that someone started to celebrate the whitetail deer by making them the star of the show instead of the hunter. Whitetails are magnificent animals. Says you are helping people learn more about them with your show. I can't wait to see the next episode. Sincerely, Jay Langley. Jay, thanks for the comment. Thanks for going to our website. And thank you for watching the show and loving whitetail deer. You know, we celebrate the whitetail deer by going to deer farms. The whitetail deer have brought so much joy to so many people, whether you're a hunter, a wildlife photographer, a landowner, or, or a deer farmer. And we want to make the whitetail deer the star of the show. We're always saying that if we do what's best for the whitetail deer, regardless of wherever they live, we're doing the right thing. So, Jay, thank you for watching the show. If you all have a question or comment about the program, we'd love to hear from you. Go to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab. My manager for Tejada Whitetails is Juliana. One thing that I really appreciate is that she's a girl. You may think that's funny, but you know, a lot of people look at this as it's a man's job because she hauls 50 pound bags of feed all day long. And a lot of people have asked me why I chose her over some of the other candidates we had. The main reason was work ethic and really pays attention to the animals. Doesn't really matter what comes up, the animals are never neglected. I tell a lot of people when they ask me about qualities for a ranch manager or someone on their ranch, what, what they should look for, is unfortunately you can't look for it because you can't see it. It's not size, it's not shape, it's not gender, but it's the heart that they put behind the job. And that's one thing that really sets Juliana apart. She works extremely hard no matter what the circumstances are. She's gonna get the job done and take care of the animals. Okay, so we're gonna show you a deer in a minute. I think it's gonna blow your mind, but uh, this, he, he's a two-year-old buck we're gonna show you, but this was his rack as a one-year-old. Take a look how big he was. He's actually more like that, Keith. Really? Yeah, he was only four and three-quarter inside. Woo, a monster. You know, people have always said back years ago, said, you know, if you see a junk yearling, go ahead and call him out, but not when you got the genetics like George has got. So right now, we wanna show you what this deer looks like at two years old. And his name is Lone Ranger, right there. Man, oh man. You know, that's hard to believe. It is hard to believe that a deer could go from this to that. How wide is he? Well, actual inside of his real beams, he's a little over 30 inches. And then he has the big flyers going on the outside. He's got a lot of tines over 11, 12 inches long. Gonna go, as you can see, way over 300 inches and pushing right at 30 inch beams. What makes it amazing though is exactly what you just 
mention was as a yearling, you wouldn't even look twice at him. I mean, he was in a pen full of 200. There was a 285, there was a 302 in the pen with him. There was even a 331 in the same pen with him. And you think, oh, just discount this buck. This year, he's one of the best bucks. In fact, the deer that was 331 is no bigger than what he is this year. So a big one-year-old is going to mean a big two-year-old usually, but don't necessarily mean the biggest two-year-old. If you have the right genetics, a lot of these deer don't do it until they're two years old. And usually the big, big jump is at three. Unfortunately, we sell 95 to 98% of our bucks at two. Okay, now, now he, he says that, he says, unfortunately. Okay, and, and I'm out here and said, George, where are your older deer? He doesn't have any. And the reason why is because people are beating the gate down to get in here to buy these deer before they get mature. I mean, these deer are already giant. Uh, I guess the oldest deer you've got, oldest buck you've got out here is Gunslinger. And so- Jesse James. Well, Jesse James, yeah. But, but other than Jesse James, who's a legend, uh, Gunslinger is the only old buck out here. And so everybody else gets sold when they're two years old because they're that good. But when you take a look at him, Lone Ranger, I mean, he, he blew up 250, 300 inches at least. Yeah, at least 300. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, a 300 inch jump in one year, that's pretty good. So the next time if you're a deer hunter and you're out there and see a little old gnarly yearling like this, think, I'm gonna go ahead and cull him. You may wanna think twice. I mean, and, and that's the cool thing about deer farming. We learn a lot of this stuff. I mean, right. as, a, as a deer hunter, you know, you've been told, you know, shoot spikes when you see them as yearlings, get rid of them, get them out of there because their genetics are poor. Not necessarily. And Lone Ranger is living proof of that. Okay, we promise you, we're gonna be giving you some gunslinger. We're gonna give you a lot of gunslinger. And the cool thing about gunslinger is gunslinger, uh, a lot of people, when they, when they have a big deer, they're all jacked up about it, but the deer typically doesn't produce later on in life. When they become a legend is when they start producing. And Gunslinger is starting to produce some big offspring. We've got some two-year-olds on the ground, some gigantic yearlings on the ground. And what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go and we're gonna start showing you offspring of Gunslinger, and then we'll take you to the Gunslinger pen. Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch, where quality is our commitment. Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Woo, I sure am proud of this feeder right here. Hey y'all, I'm Timmy Edwin. I'm president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. And I wanna tell you something. I got this Acme Global Positioning Satellite Feeder right here. It uses all the stars up there in the sky and it makes, makes a feed go just out there with a the deer nowhere to come every Ooh. night for dinner. Oh, hey, who are you? Well, I'm Keith Warren. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Is this feeder, because I use them just like this, is this feeder fair chase to you? Well, I don't know. What, what does fair chase mean to you? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the reason why I'm asking. I'm thinking you're the president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Yes, sir. I am. And I'd like to know what fair chase is to you. Well, I don't know. I guess I never thought of that that way. You know what my advice is? What that? Until you figure it out, just shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt. I like that. Yeah. And you know what? If y'all are trying to figure out what fair chase is to you, my advice is on social media, why don't you use the hashtag, just shut up and hunt, and let us hear from you. What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag, just shut up and hunt. All right, so the first year we're gonna show you how a gunslinger is a yearling that's owned by Sullivan Whitetails, and his name is Slurpee. Just take a look at him. Gunslinger now has proven production, and when you take a look at Slurpee, tell me, is that not a deer that any breeder would wanna have in their pens? Okay, so now let's take a look at a two-year-old out of Gunslinger. His name is Gunsmoke, and Blake Revels at Revels Rack Ranch has got him. And when you take a look at him, that's the Gunslinger look right there. I mean, he is big, beautiful, and he's deep pedigreed, and he's valuable. All right, now let's take a look at another two-year-old out of Gunslinger, and he's on the Antler Ranch, owned by Donovan Williams. This two-year-old, again, I mean, he's got the Gunslinger look, and it's clear Gunslinger is putting it on the ground. All right, enough of showing you Gunslinger's offspring. We're gonna show you Gunslinger in a minute, but you may be wondering, where do these deer all go? We told you that he doesn't have any bucks out here over two years old, they get sold. Well, we're gonna show you what happens when these deer get sold, how they get delivered, to another deer breeder. 
All right, so George is on the phone calling up the uh, people that are going to get these bucks. Uh, these bucks are going to be used for a special purpose, and they're going to be delivered to a pen. This guy is a breeder that they're taking them to. And so what George is doing now, he's making sure that it's okay to deliver the deer this evening. The reason why to move them in the evening is because it's cooler, less stress on the animals. Uh, it looks like we're going to have decent weather this evening. We want to move those deer at night. They just seem to do better. And so and what he's doing, he's getting permission. Then he's going to jump on the computer and execute a permit. That has to be done through the state. Once the state approves a permit and gives him authorization that the permit is now active, uh, they're going to wait till dusk, right before dark, and then they're going to go ahead and knock these bucks down, put them in a the trailer, reverse them, wait until they're fully awake, and then head on up the road. If I could tell anybody anything that was interested in getting into deer farming, it would be what really makes deer farming cool is unlike any other business that you get in, your family's involved with you in deer farming. So it really makes it nice that there's a business that the whole family can be involved in and they really enjoy. We have one loaded and we have one more to go get. So we just unloaded both the new breeder bucks at Treetops and Whitetails, used the Circle B trailers with the movable chute doors, which is safe for the deer and safe for me. Uh, we're going to go just make sure they're in the pins and everything's good. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. Okay, so I'm sure that uh, people watch the show have heard of the deer gunslinger and you've been watching the show you've heard us talking about gunslinger and there he is. I mean, you gotta admit that is one unbelievable deer. George, go ahead and, and tell the people that don't know about gunslinger, tell them about him. Well, Gunslinger's buck that obviously his look is one of those things that everybody kind of knows now. He's 19, 20 inch tine some year. He's always over 30. This year, the deer actually got damaged on his right side and we thought we were going to have to cut him. We didn't. Now his right side turns in, but he's still over 30 inches wide. Still going to have 33 to 35 inch beams. Still going to have 18, 19 inch tines. And he does it year after year. That's one thing that makes him so cool is he's not one of these bucks that's done it once. He's done it at two. He's done it three, four, five, and six. We have all those pictures, as you well know. But what's really making Gunslinger impressive now is he's passing that frame to his sons. You never know what he's gonna pass. When we look at some of these deer, they're 30 inches wide and their sons are narrow. So far, the few two-year-olds, there's only like 14 two-year-olds out there. And out of those 14, at least seven of them are over 28 inches wide. Uh, several of them like Gunsmoke, it's Revels Racks Ranch, which owns Gunsmoke, over 30 inches wide. So what's made Gunslinger famous, is, I guess if you wanna say that, is his big, high, tall frame. What's going to keep him famous is if his sons carry that trait. It's the production. It's the production yes, that he throws out there. And I know the very first time I saw him, it was just incredible. I mean, and look, what, what happens is uh, the, I don't think that you can really uh, imagine how big that deer is until you walk up on him. Gunslinger's a 300-pound animal. I mean, he is a big-bodied animal. So when you walk up on him and when, when he's knocked down on the ground, when they, when they collect him or they wind up moving him from pen to pen or what, cut its antlers off, he is so massive, not just his, his antlers are huge, but his body's huge, so proportionally, his antlers are actually bigger than what you think by looking at him right here. And what happens, uh, George, uh, every single day, George treats his deer, everybody treats their deer something special, with something special. Tell them what you treat yours with. Well, Gunslinger is a watermelon kid. I mean, he loves watermelon. He doesn't really get close to you. He's not a scary deer, he doesn't run but he could really care less if you come in his pen. He's not gonna come see what you have unless you have watermelon. You see right there, that's why he's standing 12 yards away looking up like, hey, yeah, is that the last piece of watermelon you're gonna throw? And he's always in a yearling pen and obvious reasons we don't want him getting hurt. But the other thing is, is because of that yearling pen, he dominates the watermelon field, so to speak. Well, this is a, it, it's an incredible experience for me to be able to come out here. Now keep in mind, downtown Houston, Texas is right there. 
I mean, so if you're from out of state and you want to fly in, fly into Houston and George can tell you exactly where to come. It's real close. And uh, he's got a lot of deer. He's only been in the breeding business about six years, but he's got, uh, he's made a name for himself. I mean, Gunslinger certainly, certainly helped him with that. But uh, George has got the best of the best down here in this area. And I, I owe it all to Gunslinger, I really do. I mean, you, you have gotten to, to a point now because of Gunslinger, everybody knows who George Tunall is. Yeah, he definitely pushed our farm to the next level. You know, uh, whenever we got Jesse James, now he's 10 years old, a lot of people are like, man, you know, that's a heck of a deer. And especially now you see the production Jesse James' daughters are doing, mm -hmm. such as in, in uh, Willie and Waylon and different deer that are out there. But Gunslinger, I think, is really going to eclipse them all because he has the frame. Even though you, you look at something he can bring to the game, which is his width, his beam length, and his tying length, of course, which is probably what he's most famous for. What I really appreciate about him when you start looking at his sons, a lot of them are eight buys and nine buys and seven buys. As yearlings. Yeah, yeah, as yearlings. As yearlings, and so th that, that is absolutely incredible. So if somebody wants more information about coming down here to Tejada Whitetails, what you need to do, you can go to DeerWildlifeStories.com. We have a direct link right from our website to George, or give him a phone number and tell him how they can get a hold of him. Sure, get a hold of us at 832 622-2571. George, thank you. I appreciate you having us out, and I'd like to thank you all for watching today's show. I'd like to thank Gunslinger for really kind of getting me excited. Every single time I come here, every time I go by Houston, it's like, I gotta go by and see my buddy Gunslinger. <laughs> He's absolutely beautiful. If y'all have any questions or comments about the program you watch online, please go ahead and post them below. And if uh, you're not watching online, go to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. You can watch all of our programs 24-7. My name's Keith Warren, and you've been watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.